Hey y'all, it's your boy Ebay Fight Predictions in the building. It's your UFC 268 full card fight predictions in MSG. Really, really dope card. I love the card. Uh, I had to get these out the way. I do have work tomorrow really early, so I am probably going to bust these out real quick. Uh, give you guys my fight picks and uh, keep it really, really short and simple. Uh, I try my best to do that. I know I do talk a lot and I do over explain, but it is what it is. Uh, keep it here, but I'll give you guys my picks, man. Uh, let's talk about the curtain jerker of the night. Uh, Moles uh, oh my God. Molesky? I call him the gun <laughs> because that's his nickname. Uh, oh man, but Barhaskaran, <laughs> I don't know how to say his last name versus Bruno Souza, uh, Molesky. I mean, uh, Molesky kind of proved me wrong in his last fight. I mean, he looked really, really good. His striking looks crisp, but th this is a short notice fight. Bruno Souza is actually not a bad fighter. He actually has a win over, uh, C you know, Camilla Kirk, who also has a win over Americani. But Americani just got slept, like it was, <laughs> like it was no tomorrow. So it is what it is. Um, he is he's ten and one has a better record than Molesky, but I I just feel like personally I watched the Camilo Kirk fight. He didn't really grapple like I would like to see him grapple. Um, he's gonna have to grapple in this fight. He's that to win, and uh, I don't know if he's gonna do that. And um, I just think Molesky's gonna he's gonna light him up. I just don't think he right now. I think somebody is gonna expose Molesky. But uh, I don't think it's right now. I just uh, I think I jumped the gun too quick in his last fight. I think this one he probably wins. But I think when they give him a step up in competition, someone's gonna figure him out and uh, take him down and haul him out. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. So I'm taking um, Lesky by decision here uh, over Bruno Souza. So um, yeah. Um, next fight: Phil Hawes versus Chris Curtis. So Phil Hawes was supposed to fight my boy Deron Wynn. Now he's fighting Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis, uh, teammate of uh sean strickland i've actually seen him compete before uh at uh xmma i think was it yeah well it was his kenny robertson fight um you know it was i think the james vick card so or was that a different card I, it could have been the kyle stewart fight that might have been the fight i saw but um i don't think what's his face had has it been eight months since since james vick has retired it might have been eight months, so he's had, he might have had a few fights since then, but um, he's in the UFC, um, and yeah, he's a, he's a decent wrestler, decent striker, he's a tough guy, but I think he just plays into Phil Hawes' game. Phil is a really good wrestler, oh, he's a decent wrestler, D2 wrestler, uh, I think, was it D2, or he might be a Juco wrestler, uh, D3, but um, decent wrestler, really good hands, striking, you know, heavy hands, you know, throws a lot of power. I think stylistically it's a good matchup for him. Curtis has more fights, so you never know. Maybe Phil could choke. And Phil does have no chin, so um, that is a fact. But uh, I, I think Phil should win this. I think he should win a boring fight. I got Phil by decision here. Um, next up, Aleska Kamor versus John Allen. Another good fight. Um, this is a hard one for me. I, I've been kind of struggling. Who to pick with this? And I, I just have to go with my gut. My gut tells me Alessia Kamor is going to make the proper adjustments. Uh, he hasn't necessarily lost to really, really bad competition. These aren't guys that are still losing. Uh, you know, the Nick fight, uh, Nick uh, Nigga Morani, he, he just won his last fight. And then William Knight just won his last fight. So these guys are decent. Uh, obviously not high-level guys, but they're still winning. They're, they're, you know, winners in the UFC. Um... John Allen, I mean, losing to Roman DeLizzi, I thought he actually performed really well. He gave Roman's, uh, you know, a, I wouldn't say a run for his money, but he gave him some decent, uh, a decent challenge. I, I thought DeLizzi obviously won the fight, but I mean, it is what it is. I think that he's super, super tough. I mean, he does have the reach advantage. Uh, Kamor, I, I've doubted his mentality, but I mean, the Nick fight was very, very close. Um... I, I gave it to Nigramani because of the forward pressure, but some people felt like Kamor won it, you know, with out pointing him. Uh, he's a decent fighter. I know a lot of people were very very excited on, uh, about him. They you know they were like, oh man, this is Stipe's boy. This and that, all that rah rah. Um, so I'm gonna take him here. I'm gonna take him here. I think he's just gonna be the more agile fighter. I think he's gonna have better footwork, and I think this time he might get the judges nod. John Allen probably really could win this fight. I would not be surprised. This one's a tough one, in my humble opinion. 
very very low level uh in terms of both of them but it's it's just so low level you know what i'm saying like you really don't know <laughs> you don't know who's gonna show up and not both guys can win if john puts the pressure on him kumar doesn't like the pressure he can probably win if kumar just fights a smart fight and uh, uses his footwork because he is dealing with the reach disadvantage and just uses uh, head movement and changes angles and is able to win this fight that way. He's he can he can get the W, but um, it's gonna be one of those things. So you, you never know. But uh, it is what it is. Um, next fight, um, John Vellante versus Chris Barnett. I, I mean, wow, <laughs> two fat motherfuckers. Okay, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what to say, bro. It breaks my heart. John Vellante has a win over fucking Corey Anderson, bro. Oh my god, how he did that, I do not know. <laughs> John Vellante is a bum. Chris Barnett is a bum. <laughs> But Barnett is actually a decent record, though. Yeah, he was on. He was on a bit of a win streak. I don't know how. <laughs> but I mean, fighting Ben Rothwell the way he fought Ben Rothwell, I mean, I was, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was crying. <laughs> I ain't ever laughed like that in my life, bro. Watching them fight, I'm about to cry right now. <laughs> And then John Vellante legitimately having a heart attack against Maurice Green. <laughs> and then going on to lose to fucking, what's his face? Jay Collier. <laughs> I mean, it's just. I don't know why John Vellante is fighting at this point, bro. It's just, he's 36. He's 17 and 13. He's getting close to a 50-50 record. But he's more athletic than this fucking piece of gar garbage in Chris Barnett. <laughs> Yo, bro, when he fought fucking Ben Rothwell. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, bro. I'm just I'm just remembering the Ben Rothwell fight, bro. <laughs> the dude almost had a heart attack too, bro. He almost died. Oh my god. Bro. I don't know who to pick, bro. I'm I'm going to pick um I I'm going to pick John Vellante. I'm sorry y'all. I'm so sorry, bro. Both guys have almost had heart attacks in the UFC. Both guys are unathletic. Well, John Vellante is somewhat athletic. Both guys are just out of shape fools. That's what I'll say. So, <laughs> I'm going to take John Vellante here by decision. And hopefully, he fucking has a good fight. And uh, just comes in shape and does his thing. That's what I'm going to hope. So, it is what it is. And hopefully, he beats Chris Barnett. Oh, my God. I'm about to cry. Uh, CJ Var Varga versus Odie Osborne up next. Um, it's a hard one. I, I mean, Odie just got knocked out not two two months ago, so that's something to look at. Um, but the CJ Varga guy is he's really small and tiny. You know, he's a five six guy. Uh, I I'm not too impressed with him. Um, I'm actually gonna take Odie Osborne here. He hasn't lost a, like bad competition. A Manel Cape. And fucking Brian Kelleher are two decent guys. Uh, Cape, former Ryzen champ. Uh, and Brian Kelleher is coming off some wins. Or coming off a win, I think, just in his last fight. And he has fought decent competition, beat Hunter Azor. I think Odie Osborne isn't a bad fighter. I think stylistically he actually has some really, really good you know, physical attributes that he brings to the division uh, at, uh, what's it called, flyweight. So I, I, think, um, I think he wins this one. I think he, he gets the W here. I think his length, uh, having the reach advantage like that, I, I think he'll get the W here. So I'm, I'm going to take Odie Osborne by decision uh, to get the W. So, yeah. Uh, next fight, Jordan Williams versus Ian 
Gary, um, interesting. I mean, uh, Ian Gary, very, very talented prospect. I, I like him a lot. Uh, really, really good skills here. I don't know if he's going to finish. Like, no matter what, I think he beats Jordan Williams. But I don't think he's going to knock him out. Jordan, Jordan Williams seems super, super tough. Uh, he was really hard to finish when he fought Anastasia Dina Mayov. Uh, now, Mickey Gall finished him, but he submitted him, but he did drop him. Uh, Gary, I mean, has a beautiful one, too. He's training with Stanford MMA. I like the people he's with. He's it's It seems like he's uh, with a with a good group of people over there with Henry Hooft and all those guys. Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's hard to say right now, but I, I'm going to take Ian Gary. Uh, I just think stylistically it's, it's a good matchup for him. Um, Jordan is kind of his level, you know, contender series, kind of S fighter. Um, I don't think he's... He, I don't think he's won in the UFC actually, right? Like an actual UFC fight. Yeah, he's only won that that contender series fight. That was a year and one month ago. He's lost his last two. The Mickey Gall fight was an eye opener. And uh, I mean, if you're making Mickey Gall look like fucking, I don't know. I, I don't even know how, who to say. But if you're making Mickey Gall look good, I, I mean, I, I what level are you really are? Because you know, Mike Perry that's fighting that fucking bare knuckle did did horrible things to Mickey. You know. Made quick work of him, so um, not quick work, but made easy work of him, and um, I think Ian, Ian Gary he should probably get the W here by decision. I don't know if he's gonna finish Jordan. It's just it's really what it comes down. How do you think he gets it done? Uh, he's a he's a knockout artist. I'll give him that. He has a good one too. A lot of people compare him to to what's his name, Mick Bum McGregor. I call him that sometimes. <laughs> Connor. Uh, I, I've seen those comparisons, so um, I get it. I see it. it's a really good one too, but uh, I think he gets it by decision. So it is what it is. Um, next fight: uh, Andres Mikelez versus Alex Pereira. Um, really, really interesting fight here. Uh, Alex Pereira. I mean, he's three and one as an MMA fighter. That's one thing. Um, he's thirty four years old. Great kickboxer. Great kickboxer. Uh, Andres Mikelez is thirteen and four in MMA. Thirty three years old. He's, uh, I think, 1-1 one one in the UFC. His last loss was to, uh, what's his name, Bukalkis. That's not necessarily a good thing. Bukalkis, I mean, he, he got destroyed by Jim uh, Jimmy Crew. I thought he won his, um, you know, Mikhail Olenjekic fight. I thought he won that fight. Uh, and But he got destroyed by, against Khalil Roundtree. Khalil Roundtree is a female sometimes in the octagon. You don't want to get smoked by him. Um, you know... It's kind of not a, a good sign that, you know. But it was a weird, weird finish and a weird fight uh, against, uh, you know, Bokalkas. You know, he it looked like he had hit his head on, on the fence and, you know, the elbows and stuff like that. It was very, very interesting what happened that day um, and how he got finished. So it is what it is. Um, but, I mean, his last fight, I mean, he didn't look good at all. Even though, But his opponent wasn't really good at it. At all, I felt like you know KB Buller. Uh, he's not necessarily. I mean, I don't know. He's, he's not that good of a fighter, uh, but he, you know, he made it somewhat competitive, um, and it was kind of like nasty to watch. So I, I don't know. I think Andres, unless he ra he can wrestle. Though. I've seen him shoot for a takedown. He has decent double legs, um, but if I'm being honest, he's probably gonna have to shoot here uh, against Pereira. But Pereira has been working. With the light heavyweight champion of the world, Glover Teixeira. It feels so good saying that, by the way. Um, he's been working with him. I think if he shoots, I think Pear is going to defend it. I think Pear gets him out of there in two. Um, I think he's going to be shooting for his life in this fight. And uh, I think Pear is going to have some takedown defense. I think he is. Just working with Glover, working with those guys. Um... I, th I think he gets the W here. Um, second round KO for uh, Para. Uh, next fight, uh, Ally Quinta versus Bobby Green. Really, really dope fight right here. Um, the return of Al. Uh, I, I actually don't... I like Al. Al's a cool dude. Um, probably the last um, respectable fighter for Matt Serra. And... Uh, you know, or Sarah Longo in that camp. Uh, well, they got Marab. They got Marab, Al, Weidman, right? Well, my, Weidman's not there no more. Weidman's uh, with uh, Wonder Boy. They got they got some good guys. I mean, uh, but um, obviously they got the actor boy up in there. 
sticking up the joint. So you, you never know. But I'll, I, he's a good, tough fighter. Uh, not a, not an actor. <laughs> Uh, Bobby Green is also really good. Um, stylistically, this was kind of hard for me to decide who's going to win. Um, I don't know. Green, this seems like a fight he should win. Uh, this is also a guy in Ally Quinta that's a former top five uh, lightweight. People forget that he was in the top five of the lightweight division. Uh, and, you know, he gave Khabib some problems. He beat Kevin Lee. Um, so... Yeah, that's about it uh, <laughs> in terms of his. You know, he knocked that Diego Sanchez pretty cool. So, it, you know, it's hard to say. Um, they're both the same. Al's a good wrestler, but um, he's a wrestler that's lost. He's kind of like T. Wood. He lost his offensive wrestling ability a while back in his career and kind of relied on his hands. But instead of being like T. Wood, he goes forward. Uh, he's good defensively, though, uh, with his grappling defense. He kind of reminds me. I, would, I shouldn't compare him to... To T Wood, more like Eddie Alvarez, um, you know, really, really scrappy, goes forward, has good takedown defense, has decent boxing uh, against other wrestlers. But uh, when he fights against other decent strikers, uh, like you know, in kickboxers especially, he he you know he has problems. But he has good boxing though. If you don't add no kicks and stuff like that, you know, he his hands are decent. Um, he just has a hard time with guys like you know those tall, lanky. You know, kickboxers like Dan Hooker and uh, Cowboy Cerrone, you know. Um, and I think that's where Bobby Green and him match up really well because they like to box a lot. So um, it's going to be a, a lot in the boxing. I think Al is going to wrestle. I think he can get a takedown here. I'm actually going to take Al. I'm going to take Al over Green. Um, I think Al, you know, it's been a minute since he's fought. Um, I think he did a good job. You know, it's been about two years since he fought Hooker. Um, that was a really smart decision. You know, he kind of got lit up there. And uh, he he got, he, you know, a lot of people thought he looked really, really bad in there. So uh, it is what it is. I think I think he will, you know, chain, uh, chain his wrestling, use his boxing, and uh, get in those hips. Green's a good wrestler, but it's just one of those things is like, I'm not saying that Green can't win this fight, but Green has such a knack. For getting into those split decisions and getting into those um, close fights, I just personally feel like I think Al might win a robbery here, you, you, or I I shouldn't say a robbery, but a close fight that could, you could give to uh, to Green. So it is what it is. I'm taking Al by decision. All right, you know. Uh, next fight: Edmund Shabazian versus Nasruddin Amayev. Uh, really, really good fight. Uh, in the middleweight division, I uh, really dope. I'd love to see this fight. Um, it's hard. It's hard to say. But Edmund Shabazian, since his last two losses, has gone to AKA. He's made that jump. He is. Uh, I don't know if he's an official AKA fighter. If Javier Mendez is going to be in his corner, but I know he did some of his training camp uh, there for this fight. Nasruddin Amayev coming off an impressive win over Ian Heinish. So it's, it's a dope fight. Uh, Nasruddin obviously with those guys in France uh, with Cyril Gan and all them. With Fernand Lopez, uh, I, I like the fight. It's a fun fight. Um, stylistically, uh, Nasruddin is gonna give a lot, a lot of problems uh, to Edmund, but uh, it's it's gonna be interesting to see how well it plays out and stuff like that. So uh, I can't wait for it, and um, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun, but um, I I think uh, I think Edmund should win this. I think Ed, if it stays on the feet, Edmund should win this. If Nasruddin does go for takedowns, he's shown a takedown game uh, against uh, Jordan Williams. He could win this fight, but I'm gonna take Edmund here. I think Edmund's gonna rebound. He needs to win. If it, if it becomes three, then he's in a he's in hot water. So, um, but I think Edmund gets the W here by decision. I think he's gonna show his takedown defense, and uh, he's gonna show some really really good striking. Uh, but yeah, uh, next up, Shane Burgos versus Billy uh, Carantillo. I uh, I did a breakdown on this, so. That's going to be coming out, uh, so I won't go too heavy on this. I'm going to take Burgos by third-round submission. I think Burgos is going to show his grappling game in this fight. I mean, getting knocked out in both of Well, he didn't, did he get knocked out in both of his fights? No, well, getting basically knocked out in, in his last fight and then getting hurt uh, against Josh Emmett. Uh, I think he knows that you know he can't rely on his chin too much. I think he learned um, that the hard way. Um, he's obviously my boy. I like him a lot, so I'm rooting for him heavy here. Um, but I just, you know, seeing the way Billy kind of 
had his head out there against uh, Gabriel Benitez. It just and Gabriel was always going for them guillotines. Um, I think it just kind of goes into Burgos, uh, you know, style. And Billy likes to wrestle sometimes, so I feel like Billy's gonna wrestle, not knowing how good Shane is on the ground. A lot of people don't realize how good Shane is on the ground. Uh, Shane just really likes to box, so um, I think people are gonna really see his uh, his ability and his uh, his uh, his full expertise in MMA. So I gotta go with Shane by third round submission. Uh, next fight, uh, Frankie Edgar versus Cheeto Vera. I do have a breakdown on this. I got to go with my boy Frankie Edgar. The answer. I think Frankie is going to light uh, Marlon Cheeto Vera up a little bit. I think he's going to take him down. And uh, I think he is just going to have a really, really good performance. I think Cheeto probably would have done better in a five-rounder against Frankie. Um, Cheeto should try to go knock him out. But I don't know if Cheeto has that ability to go chase for it. Frankie is a little bit chinny now. He's older. But uh, I think Frankie's wrestling and his uh, his boxing and, and his transitions into the takedowns are going to help him out. And uh, I think he gets the W here against Cheeto Vera. Um, and yeah, and I do have a breakdown on this too. So go go check that out when it comes out. Uh, and next up, Justin Gaethje versus Michael Chandler. Really, really dope fight in the lightweight division. Another fight I do have a breakdown on that will be coming out later this week. Uh, I got to rock with Chandler by second round TKO. Um, Gaethje, I mean, he's he's been really running his mouth. Uh, this is more just my personal feeling. I, I go more of it, more into more of the technical reasons why I think Chandler beats Gaethje. But it's just he's been running his mouth a lot in the media, talking about Charles Oliveira, uh, fucking saying "f you" to DC, and talking just talking a bunch of mess lately. And it's just like, bro, like win a fight, you know, like <laughs> like you beat Tony Ferguson, okay. You beat Edson Barboza, okay. You beat Cerrone, okay. James Vick, okay. And you beat Michael Johnson, okay. All right? But then you go out there and you get fucking handled by Eddie Alvarez, handled by Dustin Poirier, and handled by Khabib Nurmagomedov. And you think you're owed a title shot or something like that? Like, I don't I don't get it with him. Um, he is legitimately annoying. Uh, I don't like seeing his social media posts. I, I, I really get annoyed. Um, he's entitled. I don't get it. Um, I just I don't understand his mentality. Chandler is out there working his ass off, and he's just complaining, complaining, complaining. I, I've never seen it. Like he just I, I don't know. It just it kind of annoys me a little bit. And uh, I've never been the biggest fan of Homer. I like to call him Homer sometimes. Uh, hey, I gotta give credit to SSG. You know, for saying him for telling me that. But uh. But yeah, I, you know, Homer's annoying, man. Like I don't know, I just he's, and his fans annoy me a lot too. They think he was really good after the Tony Ferguson win. I'm like, bro, this guy is still the same guy, the one, the same guy that got outclassed by Eddie, the same guy that got outclassed by fucking Dustin Poirier, and the same guy that got outclassed by Khabib Nurmagomedov. Chandler can win this fight wherever he wants in the wrestling, in the striking, in the boxing range. The only range he loses uh, loses this fight is especially in the kicking range. That's it. I think Chandler's going to knock him out in the second round. I think he's going to take him down a whole bunch in the first. Uh, he's going to outgrapple him in that second round. He's going to faint for that takedown, throw that overhand, and I think he's going to knock his ass out. So uh, I got Chandler by second round TKO. Um, next up in the co-main event, Rose Namunez versus Weili Zhang. To the rematch, um, it's an MSG. Rose won her belt in MSG. Um, I'm not the biggest Rose fan, but I... I'm becoming to despise Wei Li, and it hurts my heart because she's with my boy Cejudo. And I really wanted to come out here and pick Wei Li Zhang. I really did because I hate Rose too. I hate both of these girls. I really, I'm not a big fan of either of them. Um, you know, Jessica Andrade outclassed Rose, in my opinion, twice, but, you know, the second time, time was against Jessica, and she probably will do it in a trilogy. Um,. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but she did fucking get hoed out by Whaley. Uh, but I thought Whaley lost to Ioana. Um, and I thought I thought Whaley got outclassed in the, in the first fight against Rose. I, I know a lot of people say it was a fluke. I think it could have been a fluke, but I just don't. I, I, Whaley's overrated. I'm not a big fan of her. Uh, she's going to be coming with a wrestling approach, I think, in this second fight. So... I talk, I talk more about it in my breakdown that I, you know, 
I bring up. I'm not too excited for this, but it's the only female fight, I think, on the card. So that's cool. Um, and they're actually kind of good. They're high-level females, so it's going to be a good fight. Uh, I got to take Rose by decision. You know, I think it's going to be the same way like she did Joanna. I think she's going to just outpoint her. Uh, and, yeah, I think she's just going to win a 3-2 decision. So it is what it is. And in the main event... My boy Kumar Usman. Hey, psych, my boy Kobe Covington versus Kumar Usman. Um, this is going to be a dope fight. Uh, I do have a breakdown coming out on this. I went really hard on my. But even both breakdowns I did for Chandler and Gaethje and uh, Usman and Covington, I really went hard on. Uh, so go check those out, especially out of all the breakdowns that, that will be coming out. Um. I got to take my boy Colby. You know, y'all know me. I'm taking my boy Colby by decision. Um, y'all, it's a, you call it bias, but I think he has a really good chance here. Uh, I do also think Usman has... I know everyone talks about how he's improved, but I think he has actually declined. I, I think... I, I personally feel like going to Trevor Whitman was a mistake. I feel like his wrestling isn't as good as it used to be. I guess RDA, his wrestling looked amazing. Against Tyron Woodley, his wrestling looked amazing. But against Jorge Masvidal twice, it didn't look too good. And he didn't wrestle against Gilbert Burns. Yes, his boxing got better. But I think in this fight, I think Colby's going to attack his legs. And it looks like he's not checking kicks. Look like he's just taking kicks. And I think Colby's going to throw oblique kicks. I think Colby's going to wrestle in this fight. Uh, I think he's going to attack the body with body kicks. Uh, Usman had more even of a kickboxing style in that, uh, in that rematch. So... I just personally feel like uh, Usman is, isn't as good as he used to be. Um, and I think he's becoming a wrestler that's fallen in love with his hands. And I just personally feel like Covington's coming for revenge. Uh, I think Covington's actually improving instead of Usman. Uh, he looked, I mean, amazing against Ty Tyron Woodley. I know he got taken down in that fight. And I know it's against Tyron Woodley, but he showed a different game. Uh, he had his hands up. He didn't do the dumb thing that he did in the Usman fight where he kept his hands low. And, um, yeah, I, I feel like... I feel like he's more well-rounded. He's shown to be a more well-rounded fighter. And I think Usman has actually uh, declined. And a lot of people think I'm crazy. But um, if you watch the fights, he was better, in my humble opinion. His RDA performance and his Col in the first fight against Colby, he used that front kick a lot. Uh, he used the, you know, a lot of the, the tools in the clinch, you know, knees in the clinch. And... Um, he just looked a lot more well-rounded. Now he just looks like more of a boxer in there. And he looks like he's boxing. Uh, so I think guys are scared of his wrestling. I think his wrestling will get tested. And um, we're going we're gonna to see. So I, I'm, I'm going to take, take Colby, but it is what it is. That is it for me and my full guard full card predictions hope you guys enjoyed the video it's your boy ebay go follow me on my instagram go follow me on my twitter if you're new uh obviously subscribe like comment share the video let's get this ebay fire prediction nation growing love y'all and goodbye